Hey everyone, it's Brian Bastinelli back again to talk a little bit about asphalt siding, also known as gasoline siding, or as we call it in our area, insel brick. Insel brick is a combustible exterior cladding that got its start back in the early 1900s. It's a petroleum-based asphalt material that is impregnated or coated onto a roofing felt product. Sometimes it is applied to a backer board that is kind of made of like a wood fiber or a uh, lightweight wood board. I believe this was done to give it some level of insulating value, though I don't really know how effective that ever was. Most times, the insel brick was applied to the exterior of the home over a typical wood clapboard siding or wood shake siding. Sometimes people just used regular roofing shingles to attain the same look or similar look. Here are a few examples of how insel brick is commonly found. Some of the high-end products can fool you from a distance if you don't take a good look. When asphalt siding burns, the heat and combustion break it down and it liquefies. As it does this, it begins to run down the side of the building, and at the same time, it spits little flaming balls of tar. This image shows insel brick from unburnt through nearly completely consumed states. If it is left to burn, it will burn through the backer board and eventually into the structure. Don't assume that just because you extinguished an insel brick fire quickly that it still didn't get into the structure. This area must be thoroughly overhauled and checked for extension. In this image, you can see where the liquid tar pooled at the ground level and allowed for the fire to extend back up the building. As insel brick became unpopular, it was often covered with aluminum and eventually vinyl siding. Of course, the vinyl siding is also a highly combustible layer of flammable exterior cladding that you'll have to deal with. Recently, we had a fire in a house that had wood clabbered siding that was covered with like a panelized insel brick and then vinyl siding over top of that. So I thought I'd take a quick look at some of the photos and video clips from that incident and go over some of the hazards and issues with fires involving asphalt-based combustible exterior coverings. The fire was dispatched at 1.30 in the afternoon on a cold and clear day. Upon responding from the station, I quickly saw a large column of black smoke coming from the area. When insel brick burns, it burns rapidly and has a very high heat release rate. It puts off dense black smoke that will be thick and heat driven. While this column of smoke can indicate insel brick or vinyl siding involved, we are seeing an increased amount of petroleum based materials on the insides of structures as well. So don't make any assumptions about what's going on or burning until you get eyes on the incident. What you can tell from this column is that you have a fire of significant size that has plenty of fuel. Upon arriving, I found a two and a half story wood frame duplex with a significant fire condition on the second and third floors. You could also clearly see that the exterior cladding, in this case, wood clabbered siding, insel brick and vinyl siding was heavily involved and spreading rapidly. When arriving, you have to quickly assess and decide where the energy of the fire is coming from and attack it at its seat. In this case, the fire had control of the second and third floors and was an inside fire now burning outside. Coupled with the reports of people trapped and animals trapped, it was a no-brainer to attack this fire from the inside. As we gain control of the interior fire, the source of energy begins to shift and now we have to account for the developing fire on the exterior of the building. If this isn't addressed quickly, there can be rapid fire spread to other structures and back towards the interior of the original fire building where we are operating. The problem that insel brick creates is a massive fuel load that has an incredible heat release rate and spread capability. Because this is a vertical wall in a tight space, this can get really bad really quick. But the good thing with these fires is that while they're dangerous and visually impressive, they can be quickly knocked down with an inch and three quarter hand line. If left go, however, they will extend, fire up the wall, fail windows, get into rooms, and burn through soffits and other building components. In this clip, you can see the flaming balls of tar as they cascade towards the ground. As they land, they pool and develop a good base of fire that can extend back to and up the side of the building. Here you can see the bases of several liquid asphalt fires that are building and beginning to extend back up the sides of the building. The collection of molten asphalt creates a strong heat and fuel source from which the fire can extend rapidly. These clips show how rapidly these fires can develop and extend. OK, 
Okay, your, your Bravo wall has an insole brick fire on the exterior. If you can get a line out of one of those windows and hit it, great. We're stretching another line on the outside. The last clip shows the extreme energy release of a well-involved asphalt shingle or insole brick fire. Significant heat release as well as turbulent thick black smoke and well-developed and sustained fire are hallmarks of this type of fire. That said, watch how quickly this fire is darkened down with a few sweeps of a single inch and three quarter hand line. So we'll finish out with a couple of quick aftermath shots from this particular fire. Hopefully you found some value in this short training on asphalt siding and it's something that you can apply to the next fire that you go to that involves uh, this particular product. If you like this type of training, you can check me out at Brian Bastinelli on social media or on YouTube at Brian Bastinelli. And please don't uh, forget to check out firemanshipjournal.com and you can also follow Firemanship Journal at, at Firemanship Journal on social media. And don't forget, be smart, be as safe as you can, and do your job.